So remember, in scalar conservation laws, we have characteristics. Right? In smooth region of the solution, we have characteristics. And the characteristics determine along which direction, if you move in space-time along the characteristics, the solution stays the same. In this case, we also have characteristics. So remember, in the scalar conservation laws, the characteristics characteristics is df du. Now we have a system of conservation laws. F, if you remember, becomes there are two Fs, right? So so F in this case have a F1 that is M over rho and F2, which is this formula over here. So we have two Fs. We have F1 and F2. We also have two U's. We have uh, U1 and U2. Let's say in this case, we write it as, F, as FH, the, the flux of H, and FM, the flux of M. We can take derivative of DF, DH, uh, DFH, DH, right? We can also take derivative of FM to H. We can also take derivative of FH to M. And we can also take derivative of FM to M. So we no longer get a characteristic speed as a number. The characteristic becomes a matrix. Right? When we differentiate the flux with respect to the conserved variables, we get a 2 by 2 matrix. And if we have gas dynamics equations, which are conservation law with more than two variables, we get an even bigger matrix. So how do we analyze the behavior of smooth solutions of system of conservation laws? Any suggestions? Remember what does the matrix do for you? If if you if you write the uh, primitive form of the equation, we get partial h partial t plus the divergence or oh, sorry uh, the 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 d the dfh dx can be written as dfh dh times partial h partial x plus partial uh, plus dfh dm times partial m partial x equal to 0 right so this is just the expansion of partial fh partial x using chain rule and partial m partial t plus dfm dh times partial h partial x plus d fm dm times partial m partial x equal to zero does this form remind you of anything we studied in finite difference remember this is analyzing regions of smooth solutions where finite difference actually works Do we know how to solve this equation in finite difference? And do we know how to analyze the behavior of such equations in finite difference? So, so for example, if both fh and fm are linear functions of h and f, uh, h and m, what what is this equation going to look like? Hmm? It's a uh, linear advection is uh, would would be a scalar equation, right? So we have a system of equations. Did we look at system of equations in finite difference? 
right? Did, did your project work on system of equations? Yes, right? And how did you analyze uh, the behavior of system of equations that are written that form? Try to decouple them. Try to decouple them, right? And how do you decouple them? By diagonalizing. By, by diagonalizing this matrix, right? So remember, we have these four numbers that forms a matrix. If we can perform eigenvalue analysis to this matrix, the eigenvalues are going to be the characteristic speeds. Right? In, in, the, in the project, we, we had two eigenvalues, one going backward, one going forward, right? going two different directions of exactly the opposite sign, but the same magnitude. In this case, we can also analyze the eigenvalues of this matrix and uh, get, the characteristics, get the characteristic speeds. So, for example, in our uh, in our uh, shallow world equation, in shallow world equation, our f h is equal to m divided by rho. Our f our f m is going to be m square over rho h plus half of rho g h squared, right? So we can obtain our matrix d f h d h is equal to what? Zero, exactly. Well, I should actually here write partial derivative here, because now uh, every f is uh, is a bivariate var uh, it's is a bivariate function, not just a, a univariate function. So I should write partial derivative here. So the partial derivative is zero in this case, and partial f uh, partial f m partial h is going to be what? It's going to be uh, minus m square over rho h square, right? And here is plus rho g h. <coughs> so this is the derivative of f m to h. Now the derivative of f h to m, that's easy, right? Just 1 over rho. And derivative of fm to m is going to be also easy, 2 times m divided by rho h. OK, so for example, let's figure out what is its, what are the, what are the eigenvalues of this matrix. And I will show you how to do that. So, so let's use the symbolic toolbox in MATLAB. So we are going to define uh, symbolic variables rho, g, h, u. So I'm going to define rho and u and g and h as symbolic variables. So first thing is to compute the momentum. My m is going to be equal to rho times a u times h, right? So that's my definition of, of momentum. And my matrix A is going to be, it's 0, it's minus m square divided by rho times h square and uh, 1 over rho and the uh, 2 times m divided by rho times h so that's 
So I'm differentiating this to m, which I don't think has this, right? No, the, uh, the first row. The first row, oh, plus row gh, yeah, thank you. Plus row times g times h. Okay, so let's do eigenvalue of a. Here's what we get. The two eigenvalues are u times square root of gh and u minus square root of gh. u plus minus square root of gh. Okay, so, so that tells us something interesting. So the waves in this shallow world equation, they, of course, it changes as the local velocity changes. So if u is positive, both waves tend to go towards the right. If u is negative, both waves tend to go towards the left. But then, there are two waves. So this is u and this is rho plus gh, and this is u uh, minus gh. And depending on the ratio of u to square root of gh, the flow can be either subsonic or supersonic. In the sense that if u is greater than square root of gh, if the magnitude of u is greater than square root of gh, then both characteristics propagate towards the same direction. If you put a perturbation somewhere, the flow wouldn't, the, the perturbation wouldn't, pro, would only propagate in one direction without going towards the other direction. If u has a magnitude smaller than square root of gh, then information actually goes towards both directions. And in nonlinear conservation laws, we, we are going to see situations like that all the time.